I suggest we start. Uh, good evening, everybody, uh, and uh, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, like I mentioned, I'm super excited about uh, launching this hashtag Learn From Doers, which is our own members uh, becoming the expert for the week and bringing uh, to you some really good gems and knowledge about things that they have. They are really experts in, and uh, Part of that uh, is the second session today, and I'm very uh, excited to introduce you to Praveen Shekhar, who's the founder of uh, Ecrea Knowledge, based out of Chennai. Uh, Praveen uh, Shekhar has been an Ascent member for almost two years now. He's part of the first trust group that we started in the Chennai chapter, and also happens to be our governing council member from Chennai. So he plays a very critical role in helping us um, uh, of course, uh, strengthen our bonds in Chennai and reach out to more entrepreneurs, but overall uh, be part of Ascent uh, community and you know taking us to greater heights. Um, today, I'm again excited about the content, which is on a large content for biz growth. Uh, I think everybody is to see Praveen's take on elastic content and how that's connected with uh, business growth. Um, what I would like you to do is because uh, Praveen wants to take uh, 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 you know um, some time explaining this to you, and then we will take uh, Q and A's from our uh, participants. I would request you to please post your Q and A and your questions on the uh, on the Q and A section of the uh, of the of, of the webinar, uh, so we can take your questions. Um, and we will also take some audio questions as we go along. So over to you, Praveen, to introduce yourself and take it away. Lovely. Thank you, Archana. Good evening, everybody. I am Praveen Shekhar, an outlier marketer from Chennai. My energy comes from your energy, so I want the chat window to be rolling so that I can have a look at what your questions are. Keep the questions coming. We'll answer them at the end. But to begin with, who am I? Well, who am I is going to be covered in two parts. The first part is I am a parallel entrepreneur. I've got multiple business divisions all under the head of Kriya that's running. I'm an outlier marketer, I love marketing, I evangelize marketing, and that's what my talk is gonna be about. And uh, three, well, I'm a raconteur, I'm a storyteller, and you're gonna see some examples of storytelling out there. Personally, I love traveling, can't do much now, photography, well, indoor. I've done five high altitude Himalayan treks, and I have a whole lot more lined up. I have spoken as a professional speaker in across 27 countries and traveled over 50, but that's me. As I said, I'm an outlier marketer. My energy comes from you. And today we're gonna to talk about elastic content for business growth. What is this clickbait title? What is this elastic content? Well, hold your horses. You're gonna come on the ride with me and I'm gonna use a PowerPoint, which I normally do not do, but in this case, there's so much to show and tell. I can tell you what to do, but I can show you what's been done. You can take it back to your business. Well. You are my Ascent brethren and we are here to share. I love my journey with Ascent for the last couple of years. I've got my personal board of directors. So when a request came saying, can you share? Oh, yes, I will. And that's why I'm here talking to all of you. Do you sense a bit of dramatic out there? Absolutely. As much dramatic as I can looking into the camera through to every single one of you because my motto is there's only one life and we've got to make it count. Whatever is legally, ethically, morally possible, I'm going to be right there. And if you are my friend or you're connected to me, I'm dragging you along with me, right? Let's move on to the screen. Do not be scared, fair warning. That's my home screen. I am an outlier marketer. That is who I am. There you go. And I'm going to be talking about a story. Keep the chat window on. I need to see, are you familiar with a Michelin star restaurant? At least the concept of a Michelin star restaurant if you have not dined out there. Go ahead, use the chat window. What is a Michelin star restaurant? Who is behind it? And now, before we go further, I have Ruchika who's there to help me out. And there will be prizes, bragging rights for all those who participate, who, answer in the quiz and come up with it. So keep the fingers rolling. Yes, a lot of people said you've heard about it. Chef is behind it. A tire company called Michelin is behind it. And the story goes, 
years ago, Michelin wanted to increase the tire sales. And they found out that the French people don't travel that much. They don't travel much by car. So to promote car travel, Michelin came up with a Michelin travel guide, which listed the petrol bunks, the routes, the maps, the good restaurants everywhere, with a rating for each city. One is a must visit, two, make a detour for it, three, plan a separate trip around it. And for 20 years, these books, come on, this is pre-internet, it is printed. For 20 years, they were printing it and uh, distributing it. It was a massive hit. Until one day, one of the Michelin brothers was traveling across and found a bunch of these books propping up a table, holding a door. He came back and told his board, hey, we've got to stop this. Anything given free, people do not value it. And so the board considered it and they started pricing it for the next year onwards. Well, the subscription rates did fall down, but those who paid money and bought those guides took care of it. And as word grew, you're talking about a French here, they love their dining, but don't we all? And slowly the ratings started including the restaurants and the food and that became the main part from a Michelin tire company People started looking out for Michelin single star, double star, triple star. They had to set up a separate business division to take care of that. And that's the story I want to start with. Content that is repurposed. What does a tire company have to do with restaurants? Well, a tire on a car can take you to these restaurants, make you travel more. So tire sales happened, restaurants started buying for it. The name Michelin was registered in France and then it has grown all over. What's your Michelin movement? What is the content that you can create as a company? And how much of that content can you stretch and repurpose to build your tribe, to grow your business? That's what my talk is about. Let me move. Well, my promise is to provide you three key takeaways that you can go and implement right in your business in the next 35 minutes. What is your promise to me, ladies and gentlemen, is agree to listen without the burden of agreeing. Anytime there is a new idea that comes in, our brain is automatically split into two and one part starts opposing it. Hey, it won't work here. That's not my company. It doesn't work in my company. Sorry. Well, all I'm asking is a request that you agree to listen to me on the possibilities that are there for content, for elastic content and everything that you can do. Do I have that agreement? I'm gonna take that as a yes while you fill it up on the chat window. Second part of who am I? I'm an outlier marketer and a storyteller. I have written five books and I'm in the process of writing five more books. Books, writing, content, creation, everything is the bottom line of whatever we all do because end of the day, all of us are marketers. Those are some of my books and I'm a shameless marketer as every single one of you has to be. This is the core of what I'll be covering in the next 30 minutes in my own way. Please take notes, please take copious notes because this is a presenting presentation. I am very shameless that I want your attention on my words. Yes, Rupesh, you've got to be shameless as well. What is elastic content? Well, content that can be stretched and repurposed to reach every single member of your tribe in their medium of media consumption. We're going to cover why it is necessary, how, who, and when, but it is necessary for me to bust some myths. I have heard a lot of people tell that, hey, this is not for my company. I'm from the manufacturing sector. I'm from the logistics sector. I'm from the food sector. Every single sector is impacted positively by good content because good content focuses only on two things, adding value, building trust. You add value, you build trust with the content for a particular tribe. And that is the be all and end all of everything. So remove self-limiting beliefs, remove the myths. We are naturally well endowed. We are born storytellers because of being here in India. We've grown up on the laps of our grandparents, hearing stories and moral uh, science lessons. Now we've got to adapt that for our business. The flow is, do we keep creating new content? Why is a content brand important? Who will read if I write something? Okay, is that a quick fire way to get it done? Hey, Praveen, I've written a blog. Are we done? 
We're going to find out. We are going to find out as we take this journey. And the first question is, do I have to create new content all the time? Hey, no, no. Look back into your life, look back into your career, look back into your business. There will be several instances, experiences, episodes. Unconnected. Write everything down. Do a content audit on yourself, on your business. Most of you out here are growth stage companies. We are not startups, but even then we have personal lessons, learning stories, episodes, put them all together. You do not need to create content. I can bet that you do it properly, do a content audit properly on yourself and on your business. You will have content for the next six months, even assuming one post a day. That's a guarantee. And you can hold me up to it. Rupesh, yes, content is nothing but experiences. And here you can beg, borrow and steal. And I'm going to take a little bit from Naveen's presentation yesterday. He called something news jacking. If there is something happening in the news, what can I learn from it? What is my perspective about it? What is my opinion about it? What am I going to do about it? I've given you four different blog headings right away from one news item. Right? So you do not need to create new things. You just need to be observant both within and outside for you to go ahead. And all we need is a clear plan, a clear strategy, a content strategy. And that's all that is necessary. <clears throat> I need a volunteer. I know I have Rupesh. I need a volunteer to write a love letter. Have any of you written a love letter? I hope you have because it's, come on, life is boring otherwise. And we are entrepreneurs. We are bound to fall. Never take a rejection for an answer. We will do it better. But does here, reading a love letter count, Praveen? Ah, yes, it does. Secondhand but, learning. Yes. <laughs> but have you ever written a love letter that says to whomsoever it may concern? Dear so-and-so, I am a great person. I am a great boyfriend to have. Please fall in love with me. Here is my email ID. Can you ever write a love letter to whomsoever it may concern? Sounds silly, isn't it? But isn't that what you and I are doing in day in and day out? Trying to come up with content to please the whole wide world. Why? Can we write to whomsoever it may concern? This is what I do. If you have some business to work on, go ahead. No, with elastic content for business growth, we are talking about pull marketing. Yesterday, Naveen mentioned the term magnetic marketing. That's exactly what it is. I can't go out and sell. I can't even go out of my door. So that means I'll have to attract certain people to come over and talk to me. Who are those people? Now you see a game out there, crux108.com slash BP game. I would want you to please click that. It's only going to take two minutes. It's a detour, but it's a simple quiz detour. I want you to take it up and come right back and put your scores. Go on, click on it. Even if you don't take the 10 questions, just get a flavor of the buyer persona game. You um, can't click. It seems like it's not clickable. Uh, Ruchika, can you post this on the on the chat as well? I have just done it. Go right ahead. I've just copy pasted into the chat. Go ahead. Give it a shot. Nobody would know what your answer is until you put it up front. But uh, come on, folks. Participate, there's a reason behind it. First one to complete and put in gets bragging rights. I would also throw in one of the books that I have here. Look, 30 more seconds, and I want you all back here.
Right. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you, Rupesh. Thank you, everybody. What's the purpose of that game? The purpose of the game is to showcase that learning can be interactive, content can be interactive, that we can go ahead and share it from each of our websites, create some content that is unique, engaging, because end of the day, what are we talking about elastic content? It has to either inform, entertain, or educate. But in all possibilities, it needs to engage with your target audience. So find out who is your reader profile, audience profile, client profile, because these are the people that you want to resonate with. Whom do you want to read your book? Who is something specific that you would need to come out with? And I'm going to share a learning that I had from my book coach several years ago. You are writing for a specific audience. You are creating for a specific audience. Your business provides service for a specific audience. When you do not know who that audience is, then it is to whomsoever it may concern and you cannot blame any of the marketing activities. When you're talking about elastic content, it is being repurposed for a particular audience. You see a bunch of books behind me because I love to read physical books. My elder daughter prefers to read it in Kindle. One of my friends prefers to hear it. Same content has been repurposed across into several parts. How are you going to use it? How and who is going to be positively impacted so that you can add value and build trust? This section is all about why is it important for you to build a content brand, to be known as a thought leader, to contribute, to add value, to build trust and to build your tribe. That is waiting expectantly saying, hey, this guy gives answers to my questions. He provides solutions for my problems. He understands my pain point. Right? So you start with doing an audit. What do I have? What are my experiences? What are the episodes? What are the learning? How can I connect? And when you have three, four, five people around, hey, I surround myself with creative people who keep pushing me to go, oh boy, he's doing it this way. What can we do together? Whether it is a gamer, a designer, uh, a creative housewife or somebody across borders, I've got three different masterminds, which keeps propelling, exposing me to a whole lot of learning. That translates into something that you can go ahead and create, which is, I call it writing. You convert it into production. Video, audio, a whole host is open for us to go ahead with. But what is it that you can do consistently? Those from the manufacturing, logistics and other parts know that without an inventory, what's the point in saying, this is my product, this is my sale? Even if somebody wants to buy, there's nothing behind. And that is why you don't just start with one blog. You write 10 blogs, you prepare 20 videos, you have 30 podcasts ready, and then you launch. Then there is consistency, there is repetition, there is a drip feeding to build your tribe and it doesn't happen overnight. It is a patient game. And you can't, this is not a Facebook advertisement where you have likers. This is a tribe of people that loves what you're doing is there in support for you. And you go ahead and reward. What is the reward? Your consistency is a reward. When you write, you encourage a whole lot of your colleagues to start writing along with you. When there is, just imagine if you have 50 members in the company and you throw in a challenge that each one of them has to write up a, a small blog for 21 days straight, you can do the math and figure out the kind of content that you would come in even if 50% qualifies you have enough content that you have generated internally, which is why you will need to have and surround yourself with creative, positive people who not only ideate, but convert those ideas into action because that is what I mean by elastic content. If you have one content, what are the different ways in which you can stretch it today to reach your target audience, to build a tribe, to use that pull marketing where they come and say, hey, I'm interested in what you're doing. Can we work together? When you have a proper ideation team, then you know all this is possible. But the final part is do. You collate. You collate content from your experiences, from your episodes. You curate it from whatever is available. Put it together for your client as answers with due credit. We are not plagiarizers here. And then you do, which is you create. You create writing competitions, picture competitions. You organize your own summits. You create your own content that you go ahead and repurpose. 
so much, so many possibilities. Hey, I have written a blog. Are you happy now, Praveen? Well, I'm going to ask you a question. Are you happy with the existing revenue that you have? Let's assume you have 10 clients. Are you happy with 10 clients today? Are you happy with 5% growth? No, we are not. Then how can you be satisfied with a single blog as a part of your content marketing strategy? Don't you think you will need to plan two, three, four years ahead? And it is possible. It is easy. It is simple because we tend to complicate things. If things are simple, we don't trust it. We don't believe it. If things are not priced that high, we say, oh, it's not worth it here. Prabhu, sorry, just a second. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I think somebody wanted to know the clarification of the word tribe. What do you mean? So if you can elaborate Beautiful. a little bit more. Thank you very much. What is a tribe? When I have identified my buyer persona, my audience persona, a collection of those people who follows me is a tribe. So I have created a tribe. A tribe is a cohesive set of people. Now let us say, for one of my books, I'm targeting entrepreneurs in the range age range of 35 to 45 in metros and tier one companies with a business um, of two crores and above. Let's say that is my tribe. What are their needs? Where are they? What are their pain points? What are the questions they're looking for from a marketing perspective? When I am addressing that, I'm slowly building a tribe. Initially, I'll have five people coming in, but the five people will spread the word. Hey, talk to this guy, look at this content. They will pass it across. Five will become 10, will become 20. And slowly that grows. And this group is what I call a tribe my tribe that I am taking care of to add value, to build trust. Why? You will see in the penultimate slide. So hold your horses right there. But thank you, Archana. I have written a blog. Is that enough? No, it is not enough. I'm here to talk to you about elastic content. I've got 20 more minutes and I'm excited. And I hope you are excited as well on the possibilities that exist when you talk about content marketing. Ah, look at this slide. I'm going to share this across with you, but all the yellow ones are the possibilities. You can write, you can talk, you can uh, record videos, you can record audios, write books, design games, posters, summits. So many possibilities. And if you can think of something else in terms of different modes of content, put them right here in the chat window. These are, well, it's obviously not infinite. It's finite, but it can be, as you can see with the empty squares and circles that are there. That's the possibility when you think elastic. And I'm talking about all of this from a single piece of content. You record one video, strip the audio. You have a video and an audio podcast. You transcribe it, you have a blog. That same video, you cut it off into five different pieces. You have video snippets, audio snippets. The same blogs come into blog posts. Same thing will be converted into tweets and punchlines and infographics and Insta videos. One piece of content stretched as much as possible answering questions, adding value to your buyer profile segment that you have finalized. That is elastic. We are entrepreneurs. Do it once, milk it as many times as you can, as long as there is value add. Right? I'm not going to walk away. I'm not a management consultant that way. I'm going to show you some examples of work that has been done, some by us, some by others across. And I'm not getting any commission for recommending all these. These are people I love, I follow, I interact with whenever I can. Well, what's stopping you from coming out with comics? What is stopping us? Only our self-limiting beliefs and a set of people around who say, boss, yes, this is not going to work. Well, if it is not going to work, either you give me an option, an alternative of why it is going to work, or please leave the room. I'm not being rude here, guys. When I was coming out with the first book, this was the lesson that I got from my book coach that surround yourself with positive friends, not negative critiques. Those who say, boss, you are not a writer nonsense. Like, unlike a friend who will say, boss, go ahead. If you fall, I will be there for you. But I'm sure you're going to be a success. You'll do great. Surround yourself with these people. This is a comic that we did super hit. These are games. Well, Funds India. It's not my company. I have nothing to do with it. But a funding company has come up with a game, card game, to teach people financial planning. How boring can financial planning be? When that can be converted into a game, that is a content. Why should Funds India develop this game? Because they want people to be more knowledgeable. They people want to be uh, people to be aware. They want to reach out to a younger target audience which wants to get involved in gaming. 
On the right side, you see a marketing card game that my company developed along with Play to Learn to teach the basics of marketing for our own staff and for clients that we are working with. This is a, a game developed by Kelp HR, Vijay and Smita, who are Vijay is a Ascent member. A card game to teach people uh, or create an awareness on prevention of sexual harassment. This is outlier thinking to the core. I can tell you about it. This is a topic not too many people want to talk about, but how do we train? And if you say I'm from manufacturing, you don't understand my sector games. I have not done anything here. It's that company. They have developed a game for aerospace engineering for IIT Madras. A game to teach students aerospace engineering or some basics of it. Right? What's stopping you and me? Well, this is something I give a lot of talks. Each of the talks gets converted into blogs, blog posts, and also as small books, which serve as giveaways that we send across to our clients or people in our customer journey. What is stopping us? Nothing is stopping us except our own limiting beliefs. Well, we send across gratitude cards to our clients, partners, vendors, photos, poems. What is stopping us from elastic content? You write it once, you milk it through. And when our creativity runs dry, we co-produce with other people. Rejected is a book that we are producing for an author based in uh, the UK who received 52 rejection letters for her proposals. So she called and said, what can we do? Let's celebrate. Let's print all those as a book. Let us celebrate the idea of rejection. So we are producing that. We are um, producing a music album for meditation, um, a, a game called Nutcase for cheese lovers. Now I'm not here propounding myself. These are all because I'm standing on the shoulder of giants and I've got creative people around. What is stopping you from creating content? Interview people on the questions that your tribe is asking. Record it and then go ahead, form your own channel and release it through. You will need to plan ahead, folks. Now, these are nine books that my company is going to produce and there is no trouble in it because I need to have a desk research process. I need to have a decision making guide for my employees and associates to take a decision. I need to retell stories. I need to go ahead and develop the buyer persona game is a micro product that was developed. I am not a technologist. I have a technologist in my creative team who went ahead and developed that. That technologist is 60 years old. So age is no bar, right? So my internal processes come out as books and as stories. And when there is so much value, we give it away. Most of it is given away free. The virtual summit playbook, we have clearly put copyright unreserved. Anybody who wants can copy it, use it. If you can give a little bit of credit to the company, we'd be happy. This is a new age of content folks. There's no point holding it tightly. This is not your closeted marketing strategy. You are here to add value. And when you give more, you get more. When you give more value, you give more love, it comes back doubly in terms of contacts, leads, and love. When you organize summits, these are two books. We organized a summit and came out with a book on global referral strategies. This is a book by Rajesh Sethi from the US. Phenomenal guy, you should check out rajeshsethi.com. And um, every day he writes one insight on a napkin a day and posts it. Mind Valley approached and he has gone ahead, call it a think book series which has a smattering of the insights and doubles up as a diary or a journal, which encourages each of you to think more. He's come out with a book, a series of books, right? So when you're talking about elastic content, he's created once he's putting it through. Now this book has been white labeled by Mind Valley, which is now distributing it to all its members. Obviously Rajesh is on the board of um, Mind Valley. These are examples. Why am I collecting these examples? Because I need inspiration across. Who is your inspiration? Think about it, right? Microsites, microsites for, well, microsites for each of your initiatives, for each of the books that you can go ahead with. How to do, Kevin Kelly, Google him up folks. He came up with the concept of thousand true fans. I am microsizing it, saying you start writing for 10 people. When you know who those 10 people and their pain points are, your writing, your creation is going to be very clear, very focused. 
that 10 has the potential to fall in love with you, your tribe when it is in love with you, spreads the word for you. You create something for your, let's say you are in the manufacturing sector, you're in the IT sector, you're in the hotel sector, you are going to come up with content that is going to help every single person in that customer journey. And when you are adding value, they will convert you and your product and your service and your brand into a talking point. Did you know, hey, have you heard about this company? Hey, I read this recent article by this company, it is brilliant. So you are in that market of writing for this smaller group, showing so much love, adding so much value that they become your super fans and super promoters. We don't even value anybody. We get stuck in, hey, who's going to read it? Yeah, they'll all find fault. Let them find fault. If they are really your true fans, they will tell it to you in such a manner that you will redo that content and write it back for them. You always create content, recreate content, repurpose content for that specific audience. And whatever you do, you plan ahead. The set of books that I said is going to come out in the next 10 to 15 months which means there is research, there is a lot more that goes in, which is why you need to get it into you that I am a creative person, I am a writer, I can do things and go ahead and implement it because each of you is a leader. And when you are positively influenced, it tracks and follows down through your company. And that is my job here to light that marketing fire of content marketing of elastic content for you to look at who are my 10 true fans. How can I convert? What is my path to get 100 fans? That 100 can become 200. It can be slow drip marketing. It will take its own time. I'm not talking about buying these fans. I'm talking about genuine fans who will go ahead with, I am already in because my trust group is my fan. They're also my critiques, but they are my fans. My next creative circle, again, my fans. And then that circle grows. How are you creating it? Right? How, sir, how can I go ahead? Well, we have our Jugaad. A lot of people will say Jugaad doesn't work. I'm here to tell you a story that Jugaad works. A story of Gita Kale or Gita Moshi from uh, Pune. Anybody knows this story? Gita Kale was crying her ears out. She was bawling in the house of Dhanushri. Dhanushri came back from work. Gita Kale was a maid in her place to find um, Gita Moshi just crying away. Dhanushri said, please tell me, what is the problem? And um, Gita said, apart from you, I work for four houses and two of them are leaving the city and they've been transferred. My family needs the money. I need the money. And all of a sudden, 50% of my monthly revenue is gone. Please tell me, what do I do? And she started crying again. Now, Dhanushri was a marketing person with content in her heart. What do you think she would have done? to help Gita Moshi. She's a, a maid who goes to other houses, cleans, does jhadu pocha, does a bit of cooking, bits and pieces, cleaning and helping and assisting. Tanushri designed a visiting card for Gita Moshi. That visiting card added value, built trust. And I'm going to show it to you. It says Gita Kale does homework, Aadhaar card verified, there is trust built in, her pricing is transparent, trust is built in, other work if required, dusting, vegetable cutting, value add also I will do. This went viral, Gita was interviewed, Dhanushri was interviewed, within a week she got the other two, three houses as well and she was back to normal all because of an outlier content marketing. Who would think about a visiting card? Visiting card everybody has. Not everybody has. By doing something different, by adding value, Dhanushri got popular, Gita Moshi got her job. Objective achieved, publicity also achieved, awareness achieved. And uh, to me as a marketer, this is a thought process that anything is possible. All I need to do is think different, be different, but do different. That's the Gita Kale story that I'm going to leave you with to think what other things have I not observed? What is there that I can connect the dots from? This is elastic marketing folks. We already have that stuff in. What is it that I can do and repurpose? What idea can I mix and match? Visiting card from a corporate setup out here, an infographic, 
a bookmark, a poster. Who is stopping us? Nobody. Well, I've got a bunch of giveaways with you. If you want to find out how to identify influencers, how to create content, your own video and AV editing, what are global reference strategies? You want a, um, a books on how do you climb your way out of this crisis? You want a free virtual summit playbook? Do you want it? I am adding value to you because this is what my tribe wants. And I'm saying, go ahead to the site, download for free. Go pick up an influencer marketing handbook, pick up a gamification. How do you gamify? Pick up the global referral strategies. None of these, I need your email ID. I'm just adding value, I'm spreading the word. I am feeding more information to you. So you will be, okay, this guy has done so much, he's not expecting anything. How can I thank him? So when you find some articles that resonate with you and you know I will like, you will share that back with me. I am adding value, I'm adding so much value, I'm giving so much love. At some point that love will come back to me. Because I firmly believe, and the question I'm gonna ask you is, have you ever been given a lift in a car or a bike or any vehicle? Some point in your life you would have. Have you gone back and thanked that person? You don't even know who that person is. But you paid forward by assisting somebody else and that rolls and comes back. I'm not getting philosophical here, guys. That is the way the world works. Adding value and building trust. What did Caesar do? I'm gonna wrap up with this story that is close to my heart. Caesar! You obviously know Julius Caesar, don't you? Julius Caesar was a 20-something up-and-coming junior politician in Rome. One day, Caesar and his friends took a sailboat in the Aegean Sea. And pirates captured that sailboat. There they were, hands clamped, standing, and the pirates were assessing each of them and figuring out what should be the ransom amount because that's what pirates do. Take these people, get their loved ones or their country to send uh, money so these guys can be released. So they were doing and there was Caesar standing proud, hands bound. And the pirate had set 20 talents of silver for him. And Caesar looked at him and said, nonsense. The head pirate didn't know. He said, what? You will ask for at least 50 talents of silver for me, not a piddly 20 talents. The pirates didn't have a clue what was happening. Because normally when people are captured like that, they go around and say, hey, I'm uh, from a very poor family. My family is in misery. There's nobody to pay. Can you please take a little bit? Can you reduce it? But this guy is doing the reverse and asking me to charge two and a half times. What did the pirates have to lose? So they sent word. And the word came through to Rome that uh, the pirates want a ransom of 50 talents of silver to be paid for some Julius Caesar. Overnight, Julius Caesar became extremely popular, famous across most of Rome. Who is this guy? This guy must be important because the pirates are asking 50 talents of silver for him. That's a Weblen effect, don't you think? You and I see it when we see a Mercedes-Benz priced at it, it should be worth more. It should be definitely valuable. Or we look at a watch, a HMT watch or... Uh, um, a Swarovski crystal watch is going to tell the same time. But just because it's priced more, there is a lot of value. Across Rome, there was a movement, free Caesar, free Caesar. They all thought he was some big shot. So the Senate approved the payment. 50 talents of silver went. He was released and he came back a hero back to Rome. A very popular hero. He raised an army, went back at the pirates, captured and killed everyone, got the 50 talents and all the other money and came back to Rome. Popular and extremely rich. And that set the stage for thinking. That set the stage for thinking that made Caesar grow up to be the emperor of Rome and the whole new world because Caesar knew that reality begins in the mind. He realized that the most important piece of real estate that we need to own today is to stake a claim in the human mind. You stake a claim in the human mind by creating a perception. You create a perception by controlling the context. When you control the context, you control the mind. When you control the mind, you control reality. And you control that by creating elastic content, ladies and gentlemen. Go right ahead and create your content. Own that stake in your customer, in your tribe's mind. That's what I have to say and I'm open for questions. Back to you, Archana Ruchika and the SN team. Right. Thank you so much. I think I'm filled with a lot of energy now to do things for uh, Ascent and how we can uh, 
we look at content for us and uh, uh, you know do a lot of things with what we are supposed to be doing so uh, i think uh, please keep your questions flowing in uh, we have one already we'll take it but if you have an audio question uh, you know the drill there is a something called raise the hand you can ask an audio question to uh, praveen or otherwise you can post your questions on the q and a section so first question from harish uh, panchal for you praveen is can we get students who can do project free of cost for all types of digital promotion from where can we get those students for content and here it's a win win situation for both according to him so do you want to throw some light on how to look at absolutely absolutely i have moved away from the free model i pay the interns i go speak at colleges and openly ask for student interns and they come in i have student interns coming in for content creation for video editing audio editing to work and even give creative ideas and take charge of whatever they want but i pay because when you pay the value comes that much more there is a whole lot more that they come in so i would recommend whatever token it is that you want to give uh, you will need to go ahead which is one of the reasons i don't give any free talks i always ask for books you can see that right behind me i love collecting i love reading i average 3 to 4 so harish go ahead there are forget students harish at this point you have creative professionals who are ready to work part time full time or share uh, ideas with you mm. and that is something i'm having a ball right now i'm based in chennai but i have people in mohali siliguri etc working for me helping me out with the content and strategy mm. because there is no physically no border right now so where there is creativity right. i will be there or they will have to come over here because i am a collaborator and i love surrounding and meeting and talking to people who are creative because that charges you up what more can i do because i subscribe to seth godin's word there is nothing called an original idea only original combinations mm. so when you have multiple combinations you add a little bit of yourself and there you have it okay. so another question from reni pandya what is good content according to you uh, when we are the creators like like if an entrepreneur is the creator what is good content according to you content that your tribe values is good content the same rajesh sethi example i am giving you he has written a book which is just a compilation of all his tweet learnings so it's a book just of tweets but he has a tribe that finds value that goes right ahead so good or bad your tribe decides and your tribe when you construct and work and add that much value and give that so much love turns around and say praveen uh, the last talk na it wasn't that much you should have focused a little bit more thank you and i will do a better job the next time around sure. right some members of my tribe reni they come pay and attend my talks they don't need to do that but they love it so much that they want to come and they want to go ahead and subscribe okay um question from jay kumar how to strike balance between creativity and marketing consultancy for the view on the on the creation super when done right creativity is marketing because you know the tribe you know what the pain points are you know what is going to be the value addition you create for that marketing happens automatically because marketing is all about adding value building trust sales will happen automatically and let me give you an answer here jay in the last 4 weeks i've had four clients come in and say praveen i want to work with you i did not even send a proposal they read my content they saw the video they knew my company can add value they walked in this is pull marketing there is no negotiation there you quote your price we want you to work great so when there's that much love going on this drip is there and everything on the other world internet world is there forever so to me creativity is marketing a uh, question what should be the frequency of the content flowing in your tribe according to you whatever is comfortable for them some say once a week beyond that you will mess that up well i've got multiple brands each brand will come out with the content at least once a week in certain cases twice a week that frequency is something you decide that frequency is something your tribe will be comfortable with and i am not talking about general likers on facebook or linkedin mm. right so you decide what is comfortable for you mm. i have i am part of some other creative tribe where we take 30 day blog challenge a 30 day video challenge a 30 day website mm. rehaul uh, overhaul challenge so in that case every day we post 
but what we post turns into books and the book gets recycled as audio books or blogs or uh, podcasts so elastic content if i do it once how many more times can i milk it come on we are entrepreneurs this is the age of frugality so that is what i would recommend uh it's not a question this is a statement uh, from kamir uh, who also runs a content marketing uh, company he says thank you for the session um however we struggle to train the team for meaningful b2b writing because clearly that's different um like white papers uh, in the age of google everybody seems to be a so called subject matter expert this is his comment uh, would you have a point of view on this and oh, without a doubt without a doubt you will have to burn your hands through but when you find the right resources hug them tight pay them whatever don't let them leave you give them freedom but then um uh, come here this is a problem all of us have right so i'm only telling you what i do i'm always on the hunt for this creative talent when i find them i try to figure out what is the best way we can work together full time part time piecemeal doesn't matter but i want that person because when you expose your team to such people this um, the collective wisdom and the manner rises so uh, please we need that external virus continuously coming in left to the language front well come here i'm i'm going to tell you something when my first book was written and um, i was instructed by my coach saying praveen send it for editing hey, entrepreneur ego vanity all will come in no hey what i have studied in english medium my english no no one week later i get the message have you sent it for editing in the third time it came baba i'm sending it for editing i sent it for editing it came back with uh, the tracker tracking changes on 90% was red i was devastated and humbled because this editor had also mentioned why present continuous past continuous in the same paragraph disjointed sentences different tense usages something that we are not aware of which is why i use professionals i respect professionals so some of the important pieces of content come here doesn't matter who is written i sent it through this team of editors mm. okay a uh, question from hide as a manufacturer i'm unsure of what method do you use or how would how would you identify your ideal customer set to create content for think about identifying the right customer right? if you can't identify the right customer for your industry or your sector find out the generic pain points and you address those pain points now either you address them personally through your um, experience or you interview 5 10 experts ask them a bunch of questions collate the answers together and that is content for you for the next 6 to 12 months put that together as a book send it across free to all your potential clients and existing clients and that is how i would approach the situation there are yeah. any industry i, have, I agree because a lot of people are love talking anyway so they like yeah. to give their opinions so it's good to take collect those but do it right the first time do a video um, editing over zoom or whatever because you have video audio blog blog post put it together as a book bookmark infographic whichever way you want right a uh, question from vishal i praveen should one invest time in writing own content or outsource to specialized content writers which one is better both both if you are short of time you want to start you have good outsourcing professionals get that done but i would encourage you to write because when it comes from the heart it appeals when it is your story it appeals and please don't worry about what will other people think i have stopped thinking about what other people think because i am worried about what might right things and anyway whatever i write is going to be corrected by other professionals right when you don't have access to other professionals uh, at this point of time yeah so go ahead go ahead pravin when i don't have access to other professionals i write i let word do the correction i copy paste the content into hemingwayapp.com free make those corrections correct it one take it to grammarly and make the basic grammar corrections and then i have my second cut ready because the beauty of writing lies in the rewrite the first is what we call the writer's vomit or the first dump and then you refine it but when i am writing or creating i do not edit i just write i sleep over it come back and edit it 
Okay. At this point of time, I will request uh, people to give feedback on the session. We're taking feedback right now. Uh, I'll ask Ruchika to please put up the feedback for the for the session. Here is the thing: we are not finished as yet. You can still keep sending your questions to uh, Praveen on the Q and A section. I would uh, request each one of you to dedicate next thirty seconds to give us feedback at this point because uh, memorability is everything. Uh, like Praveen said, and we want uh, us to find out how the session is so far. Uh, we still have 10 minutes and we'll take more questions. So please keep your Q&A coming in. Do not go anywhere. Uh, keep putting your questions and we, we still have Praveen with us for the next 10 minutes. And we'll make sure we get more questions answered by him. Uh, Ruchika, you will have to announce when we are done so we can move ahead. We're done with the poll. Okay, thank you so much for your feedback. There are more questions for you, Praveen, uh, with Ashish uh, saying, agree with your advice to pay professional. How does one recover that investment? This is a drip feed investment. <clears throat> it is not something that you can look at recovering immediately. But when you have a proper content marketing strategy and plan, it is always to an ROI metric. Is it the number of uh, people in the tribe? Is it the number of qualified leads that are going to come in? You write for that purpose. And if you ask me if you're consistent, you will see the positive results within six months. Okay. Um, and I had a question in terms of the content. Uh, even if it's the tribe that you're writing for, there is enough in content out there more. And I believe that you're not creating content, you're recreating the content, like you said. Uh, does, don't, aren't we all adding to the clutter going, and how, how do we differentiate? You speak in the language and the medium of your tribe in the way they consume. And you add a slight twist or a difference to it, it will cut through the noise. So for the younger audience, we have comics. You can write poems. You might say manufacturing, come here, will say, what is this? I said, boss, you've got to be different. You've got to cut through the clutter. And um, why not provide short answers? Why not come up with the 50 pain points in the industry? These are 50 or 100 solutions that we can go ahead with. And yes. if you find valuable content, collate it. Put it all together with due credit to these people. You are taking the effort instead of me of searching, finding, collating, putting it all together and giving it to me in a easily consumable format. Right. So you are putting it all together as a thali and giving it to me to eat. And I will value uh, that a whole lot more. Uh, I don't see more questions for, for you as yet, uh, Praveen. So uh, we have last two minutes. Do you want to wrap it up with some, some more experience sharing from your side before we say thank you? Oh, uh, it always seems tough until you start writing. And then to me, it is a drug. When you start creating content, when you start uh, um, getting the positive resonances and the response from internal first, and then from your fans, and then the wider populace, it will propel you further. And if you get stuck, which is where you have the ideation team, my email ID is there, you get stuck at any time for recent members, I'm happy to bounce things off. But believe me, it is something that once you inculcate within yourself, it's a positive drug that keeps on giving. And my job is paying it forward to inspire each of you out there to go ahead and create content, create elastic content and grow your business through pull marketing. Remember, you need to own a piece, claim a stake in the human mind, which is your tribe. And you can only do that by adding value and building trust, not any shortcut or quick fix kind of a method. Drip marketing with valuable content will always get it through. My only request for you watching through, make a start, be consistent. Next 21 days, just write something. Don't worry about the outcome, just write. Thank you so much, uh, Praveen, for today's session. I think lots of notes for me and the team for sure. And of course, our audience uh, today. Uh, thank you so much for being on uh, hashtag learn from doers. Thank you.